Hello and welcome to another episode from the Water's Edge. You catch up with us a short way into the session at Hinderclay Lakes and believe it or not, looking at the weather, we're actually in October and with that in mind, I was actually going to fish the method feeder today, but it was a frost last night or very, very close to, so I've actually chosen to fish the pellet feeder for a couple of reasons which we will show you later on. I'm just going to concentrate on getting this fish in and then we'll talk to you a little bit more about the rig, the pellet feeder we're using and like I said the all importantly why I chose that over the method feeder. So just let me concentrate on this and we'll catch up with you in a bit. Well there we are. First one of the session, lovely common. Just whip the hook out of him. Nicely hooked in the side, right in the side of the mouth. Feisty. But there we are. Cracking start. Hopefully some more of these to come. As I said, we're down at Hinderclay Lakes and this is the sort of stamp of fish you can expect to catch. What we'll do is we'll slip him back, have a little look at the rig, the baits, and then we'll get fishing again. Well, I'm well happy with that for a start. So let's just have a little talk about the Lake Ron. Now the Lake Ron here is New Lake at Hinderclay and there's actually five lakes on the complexes. I've got matches going on on all the other lakes around me so I'm trying to keep a little bit quiet not to disturb them so I know some of these matches can be taken very seriously so we're just trying to stay out of the way here on New and I'm actually fishing what looks like a, a really lovely peg. The actual peg I'm on, I'm not too sure what number it is but We've got many, many different features. Now, where I'm actually fishing to start with is a corner of an island over to my left. Now, corners are great because obviously you've got two channels of fish to come into. They can come around both sides and they meet your bait on the corner. So it's normally much better than fishing right in the middle of an island where you're actually only getting sort of like across the middle there. So you're getting two different channel points on the corner. And I've got that corner there, a corner right in front of me, and even if I want to, a corner a bit further up the bank, which is probably a little bit too far, but I could fish it if need be for a third corner. So I've actually got three corners, as well as a bit of open water as well. So the swim gives me plenty of options. Now, like I said, we're fishing the pellet feeder. Now, there's one reason why I picked it over the method feeder today. Like I said, a low glorious day today. I'm sitting here in a t-shirt. We are in October and nights are extremely cold sometimes. So what the pellet feeder actually allows me to do is put four mil pellets in there. That's my biggest difference to method feeder fishing. I mean, you can use pellets, four mil pellets on method feeder, but they don't hold together quite as well as micros or gram bait. So I tend not to do that. So if I want to fish four mil pellets, and the reason being is you're putting less in. I mean, you won't realize it, but a handful of micros, you're putting hundreds and hundreds of pellets in there. A handful of four mils, you probably half that or even more. So you're putting less bait in. Now, obviously the pellet feeder, originally comes as seen here which is like a bowl all the way over little inline tail rubber but actually I adapt mine slightly so there you are that's the normal and then we come on to what I've actually done to mine and probably what you can see there is I've cut the top off completely because I actually like fish to be able to come on top of it and feed straight from the top but these sides here keep the four mil pellets on better than they do the method feeder so that's the big reason for using it, is you've got the sides, and I actually call this the boat, I call it the boat feeder. And I said in there, you just got a little method feeder attachment which slides straight in to the tail rubber, and it's all sorted. Nice little short hook nick like the method, but the main difference, these little boat sides, four mil pellets, putting less bait out. So that's obviously the principle behind it. What I'll do is I'll show you how, how we load it and what we're fishing. We're just, at the moment, fishing with 8mm pellet. Now that will change, we've got all sorts of colours, different things like that, keep them guessing if things do get harder. And also, as well, fishing this pellet feed, I've not got a massive chuck, so I've got a nice 9 foot rod, really light in the tip, 6 pound main line, and that's going to be fine for pretty much all aspects. Hook link of 019, with a size 14 QM1 Guru hook. My favourite hooks nowadays, don't lose many fish in these at all. 
So that's my setup, the tackle, and a bit about why we're using it. Hopefully we'll be explaining a few more details as we go along. But there's one other slight difference I do to probably most people do, and I don't, the reason is almost guessing really, but I'll, I'll talk to you through my principles. So how I load it up is first of all, I'll, I'll squeeze pellets into the, the actual boat. I'll put my hook link folded back in, and then I don't know why, I like to have my pellet just hanging underneath it. So my hook link's in there, but I just like to have my pellet hanging off the end here. Now the reason being is, I believe, don't actually know if this is correct, but my thinking behind it is you've got the sides up here, so as they swell and the water attacks it, they're actually just gonna be generally inclined to be pushed that way towards your hook bait. So they'll push over your hook bait, nice little pile, picks up there and you're in. So it's all nice and straightforward and direct. So that's the only reason I leave that bait literally just hanging underneath it. On a method feeder I bury it. I don't know why on this one, like I said, that's my only principle behind it. I leave it slightly underneath, but that's enough of me talking. Let's get this back out there and see if we can have another fish. Clipped up to the corner, in, and we're fishing. Just sink that line. There we are. We'll probably give 10, 15 minutes to start with for each cast, and then we'll find out if they want more bait or less bait, and we'll extend that period of time. But for now, we'll just see what happens, and hopefully we'll be back in shortly with another fish. Well, the second fish is on. Didn't take too long, but like I said, it's a great ambush point. And while we're on that subject, as I said, although we are in now October, when it's hot like this on the odd day, if it ever is, don't be afraid to fish in really shallow water. On that corner where I'm fishing, I'm purposely fishing really tight to the island where it's about a foot deep. And the reason being, it's gonna be the first bit to warm up. It's not gonna be, anywhere else it warms up quicker than really really close into an island it's a perfect spot for winter i know naturally they probably when it gets really cold go into deeper areas but when it's not quite freezing cold and you get a real hot day get in the shallow water and hopefully you'll be getting some quick action it's right under my feet now hopefully we'll have another one to show you in a bit really do pull your arm off in here. Really, really fit fish. There we are, another common. I don't know if there's something underneath my feet or an undercut bank, but you really would not give up. You want to get in all these roots and that close by. Any little snag they can get you in, they'll go for it. But there we are. Bit of an odd one. I don't know if he's had a, a damage before, but bit of a his top fin missing there. Certainly know if you'd catch him again. Probably name him Stumpy. That little stump there. Whee. But certainly not affecting him, is it? Full of energy, full of life. And another cracking fish on the pellet feeder. Let's slip him back and get back out there. And he's safely away. Let's get another another bait on. Load up again and we'll get back out there. We're staying with the same bait. No need to change yet. If bites keep coming regularly don't change your winning method. So as we said before, one really good nip, nip it really tight to start with, fold your hook link, make sure that pellet comes off at the bottom. There we are, for some reason, it works really well for me. 
know where my cast is. Hit your clip. Sink your line. Bring that breath, look. And we're fishing again. We're putting together a lovely run of fish now, but ever so slowly, bite by bite, the, the time of waiting to get a bite is extending. And I think what that would be is fishing shallow water. The problem is with it is every time I'm getting a bite, because it is so shallow, I see like four or five bow waves go with it. And what that will be is four or five fish competing, one gets spooked, bolts off, and the others go with it. So slowly you keep doing that. They just get wary and wary of one little spot, especially in shallow water. I mean. Height of summer, don't get me wrong, I don't think it really affects them. They just get really in there aggressively feeding. But when it's not quite like that, they're a little bit more wary, you just have to be a bit more clever about it. So I'm going to leave that spot now, rather than just completely decimate of all fish and not get another bite all day. I'm going to leave a few fish there and I'm going to try and move on and see if we can get a fish from another spot. So like I said, I'm perfect position here. I've got three different corners of the island. So I'm just going to leave that one, go over to this one here, just to my right now. I always like to, to mess around a little bit as well, so although we've caught on 8mm pellet from the start all the way through, why not change and see if we can catch on something a bit quicker. I mean white, my favourite colour in winter, so I'm just going to put a little white pellet on, chuck over to a different spot and see if we can catch a fish from there. Everything else is exactly the same, the loading process, squeeze one in really hard, I fold my hook link, bait sits at the bottom, and we're ready for another cast. So I haven't clipped up to this spot. I'm just going to keep my clip on there in case we need to get back to it. But I'm pretty confident I can just drop it down by the side of this island there. There we are. A lot shorter cast, but it's gone in nicely. Probably six, eight inches away from the island. Like I said, really getting in that shallow water. We've got the sun over to my right beating down now on this side. So it's definitely going to be the warmest water on the lake at this point of the day. Again, that changes as it goes round. Something else to think of, where is its sun really beating on for when it w warms up that water? Let's just give this another 10, 15 minutes, see if we can catch fish off there. A couple of chucks, if not, I'll probably return and see if they've had time to settle, but I think this will catch as well. Well, that was pretty instant, to be honest with you, after the change. If I was going to hazard a guess, I'd probably say most of it was down to the location change, just moving it down the side of the island. But changing to white may have made a difference, but that's the thing with fishing. It's not, you don't have to work it out in the first five or ten minutes. You, you normally have all day or in a match five hours, so use the time as best you can. Try and try different things all the while until you really do work it out. And then obviously you're making a big difference. I always say in fishing, if you can make a 1% increase in your catch rate, you do that 10 times, you've, you're catching 10% more than you were before you've done those changes. So it is worth trying little things here and there. I think probably what we'll do now is hopefully get this fish in, chuck back over there, but then we'll start to alternate back between the two spots so they don't spook completely off either. He was nearly ready for the net. And what that will hopefully do is keep the fish flicking between both spots then. Time they spook off that one, hopefully I'll be casting on to the next one. So should be keeping fish coming. That's the theory. He doesn't always go to practice in fishing, obviously, as everyone knows. But certainly today, so far, has been a very good day. We've got a, a little while longer left, so I'm going to have a few more chucks. another common but every single one of these has just fought so hard 
these nine foot rods are brilliant they bring the fish up really close in save you we used to find fishing 12 foot rods and the fish were at the end of the fight were popping up out of the reach of a landing net and i had a look few occasions where that hook would pull as you're trying to bring it towards the net but normally these nine foot rods they keep the fish right underneath your your feet hopefully by the time they are finished and tied if they ever do they'll pop up right where you can net them and there we are. another cracking fish i must say the fish today have all been very very good in size as an average size we probably haven't been far off seven or eight is an average I would say I mean this one probably probably eight nine pound as well really really is a cracking size stamp of fish really good fighters as well I know these fish get caught a lot they're really wary but they certainly know how to fight and they try and get you in every single snag well let's pop him back and let's start changing things about, trying a few different pellets, flicking between the spots, and hopefully we'll have another one shortly. Well, we've hooked a, another what feels like big fish and at the moment he's pretty angry. Hooked him from the right hand side of the swim. We've just been flicking between the two. As you've probably seen, we've been putting a little steady run of fish together pretty much all day. But if I get this in, we probably will call it the last, um, the last fish of the session. The sun's sort of going down a bit now and Already you can feel the temperature slightly dropping. Unfortunately, as it does get later on the year, we don't get as many hours in the of daylight as what we would wish for. But nevertheless, it's been a cracking day. I've, I don't quite know what we've had weight-wise, but we're probably in the region of 70 to 100 pounds, somewhere around there. I mean, we've, we've put plenty of fish on the bank, all fall into the pellet feeder. I mean, certainly the the best move you've done today was flicking between and fish spooked off, give them time to settle back and you're back into another one. But looks like another nice fish to end with. Fairly big mirror. If he's going to play ball and come straight in. He's in. So I'll bring him, have a quick look at him. Before we head off home, that's another cracker. Tangled himself up a bit and beat me up in the net for his troubles. Calm down. There the other hook's out. There we are. He's pretty angry, but. They're nice and safe in between your legs. They can wriggle as much as they want in that net. And let's see if he's going to stay a bit quiet for the camera. There we are. Cracking little session. Get out on the pellet feeder. Four mils, a little bit less bait. And you can catch all year through. Especially in these colder months. September, October, November, December. Personally, my favourite time to use it. But what a cracking way to end. Sun going down, nice big mirror cup, can't get much better than that. I'd like to say again, thanks for watching and we'll see you again on the next one.